Hey guys, my name is Matt Eppers. I'm the National Sales and Product Manager here at Coachman Catalina. On behalf of our whole team here at Coachman Catalina, we'd like to thank you for your purchase of a Catalina travel trailer. Whether you're a first time camper, experienced camper, somewhere in between, we realize that it can be tough to remember how to operate and use all the functions of your trailer. For that reason today, the sales team is going to take you through the quick and efficient setup and breakdown and also how to operate all of the major components and functions on your Coachman Catalina travel trailer. Now today we'll be operating on a Legacy Edition. The nice part about that is a lot of things that we talk about in this video will also translate to some of our other product lines. With that said, sit back, relax, and enjoy this tutorial on how to effectively and efficiently use your Coachman Catalina travel trailer. Hey, thanks Matt. My name is Jeff Hill. I'm the South Central Catalina Rep. And today we're going to be talking about setting up and leveling out your camper. We've already, as you can see, we've already unhooked from the vehicle. So one of the first things you'll want to do is remove this ABS propane tank cover. And then what you want to do is you'll want to turn on both of your propane bottles. Once you have the propane turned on, you'll see this uh, regulator in the middle, it will turn to green. And what that means is you're getting positive flow into your gas system. Now, as you're running your system, if this tank runs out first, this will actually go ahead and switch over to your second tank. That way you're not losing gas flow. So now we're going to talk about leveling your Catalina from front to back and from side to side. You always want to try to make sure you have your coach as level as possible because that will make sure that your appliances are all functioning properly. So the first thing we'll do, we'll actually talk about leveling the coach from side to side. And one of the best places depends on the floor plan, but this one here, we can actually lay the level right inside this entry door. And for this demonstration, we're going to talk about this coach being a little bit lower on, on the door side, even though we got very fortunate and we have a, a fairly level campsite. So what you want to do is you want to take these Campco leveling blocks and you want to lay these out about an inch in front of the tires to an inch behind the tires. You'll have the, the driver pull forward, put those into to where you want them underneath the tires and then have the driver back up. So basically what that'll do for you is it will help raise this side and, and get your coach level from side to side. And obviously you can do this on either side. Uh, it just depends on like say making sure that, uh, that you check your level before you do it. The second thing we're gonna do with your tires here is we'll actually wanna make sure that we use chalks. What the chocks will do is it'll keep your trailer from getting that back and forth motion as you're in there walking around. So you can do it two ways. You can use regular tire chocks like these and put them on, on uh, all, all, all four wheels if you can. If not, you know, two and two is fine. We also have this apparatus that's called an X-chalk. And the nice thing about this, if you did not want to use these type of chalk blocks, the X-block you put in between the tires here, open it up, then you take this wrench and now it stays in place. We've already leveled our coach front to back and side to side. Now we're going to set up our stabilizer jacks. One thing to always remember on your stabilizers is you want to try to keep them as compressed as possible. The more compressed they are, the more stable your coach is. Usually at most campsites, the back is going to be higher than the front. So what you want to do is again, using the same Camco uh, leveling blocks, you want to make sure that you put down a solid base. And there's two ways that you can run this jack down. Number one, we provide a manual crank handle that you can put on and actually crank the jack down. Or you can get a cordless drill with the three quarter bit. Once you actually drop it, we do recommend you taking the handle, giving it about a quarter turn just to cinch it down. Now we're gonna discuss filling your Coachman Catalina's uh, onboard freshwater tank. All the, the connection here will say freshwater connection. What you'll do is you'll actually unscrew the cap, then you'll actually put your hose into the tank. We've actually went down to a local hardware store and bought this extra piece. That way it's got an on and off valve, so as you get ready to fill your tank, you're not getting splashed back. Easiest way to tell when your tank's full, you will either get a little water bleed out or you can uh, watch the monitor panel on the inside of the coach. Now we're going to talk about hooking your Coachman Catalina travel trailer up to city water connection. We already have the hose hooked up to the faucet itself. 
One thing you'll see on the side of the coach, and I've went ahead and installed it, is a pressure regulator. Something you can pick up from any RV dealer, a lot of your local parts stores, hardware stores. The main thing with the pressure regulator, you always want to make sure you have one of these because during peak water usage time, sometimes the, the pressure is a little bit unstable, and this is a preventative way to you know keep you from having any issues with your water system in your coach. So what we'll do, I've already got the the pressure regulator installed. Now I'm going to take my water hose, open up the valve, and now we're engaged in having city water throughout our coach. Now we're going to discuss hooking your Coachman Catalina up to shore power. This particular model is set up with a 30 amp service detachable cord. As you can see, we've already plugged the shore power in to the box. We will connect this to the coach itself. This particular coach is set up with 30 amp service. Some of our units have 50 amp service with two ACs. So what you might want to think about is also investing into, into a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter in case if you run into a park that does not have a 50 amp service spot available. Once we have this plugged into the shore power, we're going to bring this cord over. And with the cord itself, you put it in and you'll actually twist it to get the plug to lock into place. And then once the plug is locked into place, you'll actually tighten this ring down. And that'll hold your power in this spot. Hi, I'm Chad Yotter. I'm with Coachman Catalina. I represent the West Coast territories for US and Canada for the product. Um, excited to be out here today going through the new product. Going to go over a couple of different items for you. Um, I'm going to start here covering some points about our entry doors, our entrance steps. Um, we're also going to cover a couple of really cool systems that we've added for this model year and then touch base on just some basic functions with checking tank levels, running out your awning, your awning lights, and then I'm um, going to highlight to a couple of things about our slide outs. So um, look forward to going through a few of these items. Um, first off, I'm going to start with our entry door. Um, everybody's got one. Not everybody has a nice entrance window in it. Um, that's one of the features that we do like with it just because it adds a lot more natural light inside. Um, it's good to see if somebody's on the outside of the trailer. Um, we use a friction hinge on our entrance doors. The nice feature about this is it adds a whole lot of resistance to the door, so you don't have your entry doors swinging back and forth anymore loosely. The next item I want to highlight too is our entrance steps. So typically you're going to have two different styles, either the fold out steps from underneath or we've gone standard to at our main entrance to these fold down solid entry stairs. Um, real sturdy, makes it nice for getting in. They have a wide platform up top here that I'll show you. So, Bringing it down, you just move the lever over, it unlatches it from the doorway. You can lower it down. If for any reason you are on a different level ground or needed to, you can adjust the leg height for the different places that you're at. Um, it's as simple as a little pin right here. You're just gonna pop that pin out, slide the leg, pop it back into place where you want it. Um, great feature to have, and it's now a standard on all of our main entrances. This does have a extra wide top platform um, just to make it that much easier when you are standing here, you're not right on a little edge. It would be very rare instances, but I would actually like to cover some areas on overriding your slide outs. Um, it, it's not something that would be common. You should probably be able to own your trailer for the life of it and never need to know this, but in the rare case that something like that could happen, I wanted to touch some points on how you would do that. So two different types of slide mechanisms that we're going to use at Catalina. Um, this trailer, we actually have two on it that are both are through frame slides, which is a rack and pinion electric slide. Um, the other mechanism that we could use is a Lippert Schwintech slide and we'll do that on some of our bed slides or above floor slides um, so I can note to that here in a moment. Um, your standard rack and pinion through frame slide is going to be what's most common on the trailers. Um, in the instance that you would actually need to override it, um, 
We would start by disconnecting from our batteries, just that way when you crank the motor backwards, um, bringing the slide in, it doesn't backfeed anything um, to the batteries. So you're gonna have a hole with a grommet in it right here in your fender skirt, directly opposing the slide out that you would wanna manually override. And what's right behind this is going to be the cylinder that's gonna run all the way through, the motor's gonna be on it, and it's actually what runs the gears. You can use your standard crank handle that comes with your trailer or anything with three quarter inch socket. Um, you're gonna run it right through here and then you can connect right on there and you can spin this around to rotate the slide manually in and out. It is a very simple process. Um, doesn't take much effort to move it in and out. So another really exciting new feature for us in all the Catalinas this year is we are now fully equipped with the RV Link Wi-Fi 4G high-speed LTE coverage system from Magnadyne. Um, this is really exciting for us. It is the complete system for total connectivity wherever you're gonna go. Um, this is not one of the just basic prep systems that you have to add a, other equipment to. This is ready to go, out of the box, fully installed in your trailer. We have the router directly here. Um, this is going to be great for those of you that are both in a campground and want the increased boosted reception. This does have that. Um, just kind of gives you a longer range if you're on a campground Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi anywhere. Um, you can immediately connect directly to this. This has been set up to hold and use up to 10 devices, um, which is fantastic with as many as we often do have with us anymore. Um, whether it's your computers, smartphones, tablets, you know, smart TVs. Um, those things are all going to be able to operate on this and you can have up to 10 devices um, transmitting right through this router system that's set up. Um, this is perfect for those of you that have now become part of the, let's work, you know, we're working away from home or away from the office or e even those of us that, you know, our camping trip or our travel is actually some pleasure and we finally get that opportunity to still, you know, keep tabs on some of the things going on work-wise um, or if it's just for having fun, um, really cool system that is already all in place and doesn't have to have other items added to it. A second part of this that I had mentioned to was the LTE coverage. So that is even one step further than a lot of the systems out there. A lot of the systems that are already set up with a router are just set up for Wi-Fi at a campground or just to try to boost something. Um, this actually already comes currently with an AT&T SIM card installed um, that you can use any of their data plans that they offer and have a true hotspot for up to 10 devices from anywhere totally disconnected and out away from everything. Um, if you have Verizon or one of the other many carriers, you can just get a SIM card from one of them and swap it out for the AT&T SIM card and the full system is right back to your LTE with whichever carrier of your choice. So the setup for this is going to be extremely simple. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You should have a hang tag that actually comes in the trailer when you purchase it. Um, it's gonna look similar to this. There's a QR code right on here that you can scan, go right into creating an account and setting up um, your router. The other method would be actually just going to magnadine.com forward slash Catalina. Um, we'll have that included in our documents and in your manuals. Um, that's an easy way to go right in, set up the router. There's also full instructions, details of what all it's capable of. Um, there's different how-to videos on the different setups. And if you are swapping out and using you know, a different carrier's SIM card, um, but it, it's a very simple system and everything is there through magnadine.com. One of the next features I would like to um, key in on some points to is our actual monitor panel that's already been a central monitor panel for all of your controls for the unit. But what's really exciting this year um, and really kind of a cool advantage that you're gonna have a lot, a lot of opportunities with, um, this is now what's called the LCI's One Control System. Um, what's really cool about this is it actually has an app that you download the LCI One Control um, on your phone. Once you open this app up, you'll be able to connect via Bluetooth to your control panel. Um, it's fantastic to be able to run your awning in and out, run your slide outs and open your unit up, turn your lighting on and off, you can control your awning lights. 
This is also going to give you abilities to check your tank levels, battery levels. Some other advantages to the LCI-1 control. It's going to be fantastic in the sense that this is set up once you create your account and log in and connect to your trailer. It's also going to give real-time notifications to points that um, maybe something needs maintenance or updates or it's going to tell you, hey, your tank's three quarters of the way full or your tank's completely full. Um, it gives you real-time live updates. There's a lot of other tools that this is going to provide, the settings. Um, you have some custom controls there to what kind of information you want it to help you with, what kind of notifications you'd like for it. Um, but this is going to be a fantastic feature. One of my favorite advantages is, you know, you're running out of slide out, you're running out an awning. Um, those are oftentimes something at your campsite and the spot you're, you're located at. You know, you're having somebody outside trying to spot to see if you're too close to a tree or going to be able to open it all the way up. Um, this feature is going to allow you to walk around the trailer and you can push a button and run your slide out and watch and see exactly for yourself where that slide's opening to. You can do everything that you could do on that app directly on your control panel as well. So you're not limited to need to use the app for that. Um, you have all of your standard controls here. You can monitor your tank levels for your gray water, your fresh water, and your black tank. Or even if you have that second galley tank, it's going to have all the levels on here. Um, you can run your, you know, turning your interior, exterior lighting off. So we've got those. But it's a really neat feature just to be able to control everything within the trailer from here or here. So one of the next features that I'm going to go over a little bit on is our electric awning from Carefree. Um, it's great to have the convenience of just being able to power an awning out. Also one of the cool features included with the Carefree's awning is the multicolor lighting system. So there, here is a sticker notifying to the multicolor lighting system. Um, some advantages to that are actually going to be, you know, there may be times when you want the lights brighter um, when you're first setting up your campsite if you get there after dark. Um, and then once you're actually all settled in, you may not need that much light and you want to pick a color that's a dimmer color or you can actually brighten and dim them. I'll show you that on the remote here in a few minutes. Um, we're going to go on ahead. We're going to run our awning out here and we're actually going to use this fancy feature with the LCI-1 control that we just went over. And it's as simple as that. I could have gone into the trailer as well and ran it out from the monitor panel. So now that we've got our awning ran out, I want to note to a couple of other points on here that are nice advantages and conveniences. So each of these awnings on the awning arms has six different positions that we can change the pitch to. So this little bracket back here, you squeeze it in, then we can slide the awning arms and it'll lock it in place at whatever pitch that you want the awning to be. You can bring both of them back in if you want to add some shade. You can kick it one direction if you want water to run off one side or the other. So the other point that I had noted too was the multicolor awning lights, which is a pretty cool feature. <clears throat> this is what the remote will look like that comes with your trailer. It's going to give you those 16 different color choices that you can go through. So we can switch these to green. We can switch them over to a red or an orange color. Um, if we actually switch back here to one that's brighter and we'll try out some of the others. So there's a flash pattern. We're gonna have a few other choices for you, um, but it makes it a lot of fun. It's exciting too, just because there's different options. Good morning. My name is Jerry Cole. I am with Coachman Catalina. I cover the Southeast Territory. Today I'm going to talk to you about some of the different uh, features that we also have on a Catalina. We're going to start with our gas and electric hot water heater. That's something consistent throughout all of our models. So you have the ability to run gas through your propane tanks to heat your hot water. You also have the ability to use campground electricity to reheat your hot water. The uh, electric side will actually turn on and off right here on a little switch so when you turn that on uh, it's going to be running on the electric side when you are hooked up to campground electricity 
Uh, you can also turn on gas from inside on your LCI-1 control board uh, to turn on the gas side. So you can run them both at the same time for maximum efficiency. You can just run electricity. You can just run gas, whichever fits the need of where you're at. When you do turn on the electric side, it is gonna pull some amps, so if you have 30 amp power, you're gonna to have to do some power management. If you have 50 amp power, it won't be an issue. You'll be able to run all that stuff at the same time. So that's how that works. So let's move on. Today, we're gonna to talk about a little bit of our camp kitchen. Many of our models do have camp kitchens in them, which is a great way to prepare your food outside. Uh, so with this, First thing, obviously, you're gonna to get to open your door. We have the nice magnet mount, so it'll hold those doors in place for you. Next, we're gonna pull this out. And you have to push down both of these at the same time in order to get it to go in or come out or lock in place. So if you only push one, it's not going anywhere. So that's a safety feature. This is a griddle. Uh, which is great. You can fry hamburgers, you can do a steak, you can do pancakes. It all works really well on that griddle. This is a gas. We do have a quick connect. So what you can do is hook up down here and then you just bring this back up around through. So once you get it hooked up here, down here, you're going to bring this back up around and then connect up to the actual stove itself back here. So it, uh, it works quite easily. That way you're running off your propane bottles up front here without having to bring an extra gas grill or anything like that. So it's uh, uh, one of the nice features that you get with a uh, camp kitchen. The other thing that we have, you've got a nice refrigerator so you can keep your refreshments out here so you're not constantly going inside, outside, uh, putting hot air into your camper. So that's a nice little uh, college size refrigerator. Up in here, you've also got a bottle opener, so you're not constantly looking around for that bottle opener when you're out here. And then uh, we do also have, for your camp kitchen, so you do have some water out here. We do what's called a uh, quick connect spray port shower, and that actually hooks up over here. So all you have to do with this, and there you go. So that's how your whole camp kitchen works here. So you can do dishes, you can get uh, wash things out here uh, and cook everything you need right in one easy place under your awning, right where everybody's at, having a good time. So after you get your camp kitchen hooked up, your gas line comes through, it's hooked up back here. One of the things you're gonna find is that you no longer can push this in. It's a safety procedure to prevent you from pushing your, your uh, camp kitchen grill griddle into the actual camper if it was hot or still hooked with gas or, or anything like that. So uh, don't be surprised when you go, oh, I can't put it in. It's because your gas is still hooked up. You know, you have to disconnect your gas lines in order to slide that grill back in. The next thing we're going to talk about is our JBL speakers. So on our legacy models, trailblazer models, destination models, we've put two of these speakers out here. On our uh, Summit 7, Summit 8s, we put one. Uh, they are actually tuned to go with the actual JBL uh, radio head that's inside the camper. It's going to give you premium sound that's balanced. You can crank these things up 8, 9, 10, and you're not going to get that harmonic distortion that you normally get out of your average RV speaker. So you're going to be able to just absolutely knock the socks off or rock the socks off of your neighbors next door and a half block away. So. Uh, premium sound is what you'll get inside your Catalina. We're going to explain how that all operates inside uh, with uh, another demonstration when we talk about our audio visual system uh, and that'll be taken care of by one of my associates. Well, on the back of our Catalina Legacies we have an actual additional storage rack on the back. This storage rack will actually hold 150 pounds plus the spare tire. So it's a total of 200 pounds uh, but I think it's easier just remember as a customer, make sure you don't overload it with more than 200 pounds total, 150 pounds of cargo plus spare tire, any way you want to look at it. These are awesome for actually carrying bicycles, firewood, uh, coolers, generators, all those additional things that you need when you're actually going camping. It's one of those game changers that's on your Catalina. To operate it, 
literally just take your pins out. Flip it down. We put these back in to hold it in place. You'll put the other one back in on this side. And now you're set with your storage. So it's convenient. Uh, a lot of people, once they put them down, they probably won't put it back up because they'll always just keep stuff on here uh, as they go through. Um, on the back here as well, if you see up here, you also have a backup camera pre-wire. That is actually for um, a Furion camera system. It's a 15 minute install if you want to buy one on your own. You can certainly have a dealership do it for you, but literally that camera works so well that you can see your hand on the back wall. So nobody's gonna ever run over somebody without seeing them first. So be mindful when you're backing up. So now we've come around to our outside shower. You notice we already have the spray port on the other side for the camp kitchen, which we do on any model that doesn't have its own sink outside. And then on the back side, we've got our actual own shower. So what you have is your hose with your on off on your shower. But one of the most important things that we do here is we actually give you a place so you can actually take a shower outside. You've got hot and cold out here, so it's very easy to use. It's easier to wash the dogs off, wash the sand off, any of those kind of things. So uh, I think it's one of the best done outside showers out there in the market today. We got to the campsite and Jeff has walked us around how it's set up the trailer, leveling it, chalking it. Um, and Jerry and Chad have gone around some of the outside features, whether that was the outside kitchen or the gas griddle, looking at the outside speakers, um, but working our way around the outside. So we're gonna take a step in the inside. Hey, we've set up, we're ready to go. How do some of these appliances work? And where we find ourselves is at our digital three range burner here. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna take this glass top, which is great for coverage when you're traveling, but let's get it out of the way, right? That way we don't have the flame going into it. We're not crack, uh, cracking glass, but we're also using it as a, a backsplash here. So we got a three range burner. What do we want to do with this digital control is you got an oven light here, put in all my burners, they've got power now. And then we've got our stove, is, our stove here and we got our oven here. So the blue light means we do not have any gas going to it, right? It's a safety feature. It's a neat feature in case maybe one of the kids step into it like I just did, we know the gas isn't on. If the gas is on, this blue light is gonna turn to red, as so. And you see, because I held that in when I turned it to high, we have a flame going. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here on the others. Light the middle, and then you see with the corresponding marker, I'm gonna light this back flame. Hold it in, now we've got gas going to the range. First time use of the campsite, I'm actually going to let this run for about five seconds, bleed out all that air from the lines that we know the propane's going through. I've got a gas electric fridge here instead of my standard 10 cubic 12 volt. That way I'm bleeding the lines out. We're ready to run the furnace. We're ready to run the gas electric fridge. We're good to go here at the stove. I'm gonna turn these off here and then I'm gonna show you real quick on the oven and then we'll move on. I'm gonna open this up just as a safety feature here as I'm running the gas. That way I'm not building anything up. Um, and we'll move in here in a second, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna off position here blue, same thing as the range top. I'm gonna turn this here and hold it. Hold it in here, I've got my pilot light. I'm lit here, gas is on, it's red. Next thing you know, I'm gonna look here at the 250. I'm gonna set it just as you do at home, desired temperature. Press it if you want short jumps, hold it if you wanna skip farther ahead like your oven at home. Next thing you know, we're gonna see this pilot light go to its full length and you're gonna be ready to cook what you need to. All right guys, so we've, we, we're ready to go for the cooking. We got our pizza, we've got the soup on the range tops. Let's move here to the fridge where we're keeping all that stuff cold, right? What we're looking at is our GE fridge. It's a standard fridge for us at 10 cubic feet, 12 volt. Now we do have an option to run a seven cubic gas electric, but what we're looking at here, the 12 volt 10 cubic is our standard fridge. As you can see right here, we do have this safety lock. So when we're traveling down the road, these doors aren't gonna go anywhere, right? Let's move this out of the way. 
show our fridge here. Now, what are we looking at here when it comes to our fridge and our freezers? I don't see any lights. Now I see it was on when it was coming out of the factory and I had it set up this morning, but I'm not seeing any light here. What we're gonna see on this far side is a, a disconnect switch for all of our fridges, right? Most importantly, what we're doing is, hey, this on off switch, when I'm packing the food, um, I wanna make sure this fridge is on, it's cool and it's ready to go for the trip. But more importantly, when I get home, right? This fridge, I'm putting it away for the season or I'm putting it away for the weekend. Let's make sure this switch is off. What is that doing? It's making sure we're not draining the battery and you're not put in a bad position to start your camping trip the next time around. So little feature, but huge feature to make sure you're ready to go for your next camping trip. All right guys, so jumping back into the kitchen real quick. Jerry on the outside, he went over the water heater, right? You might think to yourself, how do I find the water heater when I'm looking to bypass it for winterization? You know, I don't want that antifreeze going in there. I want to bypass it. I'm going to show you how, but how do I find it? Two ways. Jerry on the outside, he showed you where the placement was. We can find it on the inside from where we know it is on the outside. Two, jump on our Coachman Catalina website. Every floor plan, like, like this 263 FKDS, we're going to have a floor plan layout and we're going to have it labeled for you, water heater. You know it's here. I took the access panel off, off camera, all I did, drill gun, two screws, pop it off. Next thing you know, I've got access to the back of my water here. So what do we want to do with these valves? I'm talking about winterization, right? It's coming to the end of the season. I want to get this thing ready to go for storage for the winter. I want to make sure I'm bypassing my water heater. This thing just came off the factory line. Every Catalina is winterized coming out of our facility to the dealerships. It's ready to go already. You see these valves placed towards these lines. That means I'm bypassing the water heater as we speak. But we're here at the campsite and we want to use our trailer, right? I want that 16.2 gas um, or hot water per hour with both dual source gas and electric. How do we get to that? Well, let's not bypass it. We've run our water. Let's turn this valve towards the water heater. And now we're running it, right? We're ready to go. It's set up. When we're bypassing it in the, for winterization, remember, that's when we get back and we look at changing these towards the pipes. Now we know that antifreeze is bypassing it, running through your line, so you're good to go for that winter storage. We made our way into the inside, right? We've gone over some of the appliances, but a day like today, we might've messed up. It's 100 degrees outside. We're sweating in here filming the video. We should've came straight here to the AC, right? So AC, um, Furnace all here on a digital thermostat with GE again. There's that name, GE Fridge, GE Thermostat. What we're doing here is I'm just simply gonna hit this mode and I'm gonna turn on this cool, um, turn on the AC. So what it is is same thing at home, right? Change your temperatures here. It is digital, 60 all the way up to 85, depending, hey, we're running our furnace, we're running our AC. Now you hear it turn on and we're looking at it right here. It's a 15K GE AC. It's actually an option for us. Our standards are 13.5. A unit like this where I want some coverage on it, I want to go to that 15K. Right away, you're going to see a neat little feature. Like I said, it's 100 degrees here in northern Indiana. I want to cool down this room right away. I don't need to hit all the ducks in the room yet. We're standing here. We want it here. Neat little feature. Let's open that up and cool down the room. You know, like I said, we messed up. Let's cool the room while we're putting the food into the, into the fridge, getting ready to go, uh, or maybe unloading, offloading groceries. Cool down the room a little bit. Let's close this back up, and then we're gonna hit our ducts going through the unit. Um, back to this thermostat real quick here. We see we have one thermostat. It's a 15K unit. We don't have a second AC on it. Now there is an option for it, and if they do so, you're gonna find a second thermostat for that second, um, second AC unit. Now jumping real quick, over to the furnace side of things, I'm not gonna run it. Like I said, it's 100 degrees in Northern Indiana. Let's switch the mode though, just to show a quick option from cool to furnace, it's that easy. Like I said, from your 60 to your 85, I'm gonna turn it back on the AC real quick. It's too hot in here to have the furnace going, but we're ready to go with that because like I said, we turned on that gas or Jeff did outside. I bled the lines out of, um, the lines going to the oven, going to the furnace that way, the gas is ready to go. We can run that furnace no problem. We're ready to go when it comes to that you know, winter time or maybe those cooler spring or cooler fall days. Speaking of cooler, when we're talking about our fall or our spring and hey, maybe I don't wanna run that furnace, right? It's just not that temperature. 
What do we have here as an option? Now, like I said, it is option, but I think it really adds the room and I love putting it in all our units, is a 5,000 BTU electric fireplace. What we're gonna see here, remote, on button, I'm hitting it on, we've got different settings, whether that's dimming it down, lighting it up, whether that's changing the color of it, Sixty-two to eighty-two degrees on it. I can turn it on a timer. I can change the lights. Um, I can turn it, like I said, to where the, it's not even running the electric temperature. It is just the colors to it. Easy remote to use as well. Plus the buttons here on the fireplace. So moving on from me, Troy's going to show you how to, you know, empty or tear down the campsite. She's going to show you how to empty the tanks and empty the black tank. Why we're here? We're looking at the toilet, right? I want to show you guys how to take care of that black tank. What we're gonna do with that water connection that's already hooked up is I wanna make sure we have some water in there. I've done it four times out off camera because we wanna do it five times. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put my foot on this pedal. It's not gonna open the valve all the way, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna fill this water up to this fill line. Like I said, four times off camera. This is my fifth. What am I doing to the fill line now? I'm putting all that water in the tank and why did I do so? It's because I want to put these chemicals down there. And what do these chemicals do? Well, they're going to protect that tank. They're going to make it easier to clean with our awesome black tank flush on the outside. But it's also going to help break down anything that's in that black tank flush. Now, or in that black tank. Now, speaking of what we're putting in there, this is all I want to put in that black tank is RV gray toilet paper because it's made, it's designed to break down. It's not going to clog that up. It's not going to cause problems when you're using your black tank flush. So why we're on the subject of tank, right? We talk about the black tank, but what if we're not at the campsite? What if we're off grid and I've only got that valuable resource of water in that one tank and I'm filling up quickly on my gray tank? Neat little thing that we're going to do with all the shower heads is this little switch, right? It's simple, but it's saving you that resource of fresh water and it's helping you not fill up the gray tank. So I turn on my, my, my hot cold shower, right? Um, and I don't want to run it or maybe hey I just want to soap up and not waste all that valuable resource this switch water is on right now no water coming out if I'm hooked up you know maybe I do want that full shower we'll turn it on the water's coming out this just controls helps you res protect that resource the water and helps you not fill up that gray tank if you are off grid why we're here before I move one key thing I want to look at here is this GFI outlet now, let's put ourselves in a scenario, right? The kids come to you, hey, my iPad's not charging. We know we got something wrong with our 110. What do we wanna do is we wanna find this GFI. And we talked about it on the AC earlier. This is a 30 amp unit because I'm not using a second AC and I'm not prepped for a second AC. So we know it's 30 amp, we're gonna have one GFI outlet. If I'm 50 amp, you're gonna find a second one, usually in the kitchen, sometimes in the outside kitchen, depending on the floor plan layout. Let's get to the GFI. If this thing is red, there's gonna be a light here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trip it and that should restore power to your 110. If you're still having problems with your 110, we're gonna jump over here and look at our fuse box where you're gonna find your breakers, you're gonna find your fuses. We can dig into the problem from there, but usually this is gonna help you initially find the problem with that 110. All right, so we were just talking about the 110 problem in the bathroom, right? We're here at the breaker box. We've got our 110 back, we fixed it. But what if you find yourself in a situation where there is, you've lost power and it wasn't the 110? Well, here we are at the breaker box. And this is floor plan dependent in all of our units. Um, you know, like I said, we'll look at the floor plan. You look on the website, you're going to find where this is at. You're going to see it pretty easily. But what do we have? Just like your home, you've got your, you got your breakers, but you also have your fuses. If we have a problem outside that 110 and it is something on our fuses, we might see a red light here in which we do so right now I've got a bad fuse sitting on my bathroom so if we're looking at it right here I've got no power right let's get a new let's get a new fuse in there we'll replace it I've got my needle noses here I'm just gonna jump into this fuse box everything's marked between the voltage and the fuses pop out the bad I'm gonna throw in the new fuse here Now let's check it out and see what we got. And we've got light. All right, so moving back to the back of the trailer here. We've come from the kitchen, we went to the bathroom. Let's jump to the back here. Now, every bedroom is different. Right here in our front kitchen, rear queen flag, we're gonna find the bed in the back of the trailer. Some floor plans have it up in the front with a bunk room in the bed in the back. 
Okay, anytime you have a bedroom, we have a safety feature, we're gonna add a Catalina, that's a egress window. So in case of emergency, let's rip this screen out. All you do is you move this handle, you're gonna push it out all the way through, right? If we're just looking for extra airflow here, and just another window you just sit on the ledge. Next thing you know, we just have one more window added to Catalina for you. But yeah, safety window here in every bedroom, open, and you do have that escape route if you find yourself in an emergency. All right guys, moving out of the trailer here, we're coming back to the living room, but before we get to the outside and Troy takes over on some of the teardown of the Catalina at your campsite, let's look at, like we say, best for last, right? And we know these three letters, letters is JBL. We know the name and we want to give you guys that quality in all your Catalina Legacy Series, JBL or a package. And what we're going to look at here is just how awesome these speakers sound. So we're going to turn it on. You're going to see these lights that are working with it. It's adding to that music. You see it. I have it in FM already. There's going to be zone A on. What I want to do is I'm going to go zone B. That's right. Independent zone control. It's pretty neat where, hey, let's turn that back off. Music inside, music outside. Um, or whether the kids want to watch a movie with the TV they bring with them on the inside where you guys want to play your music on the outside, right? So independent zone control, A and B, click on off to control both of those zones. FM, Bluetooth. What I'm looking at right here is what our HDMI where you're going to plug that into your port which is going to be called the ARC on your TV. That's going to make your sound come out of those JBLs instead of your TV. So you're working with that JBL or a package inside, outside. We can hear it. Um, I'm going to turn back this zone on. We can hear it. I'm going to turn the volume down. So we're going to jump from the FM, right? What I do is I'm going to click the Bluetooth here on the remote. You've got the functionality here too where you can do your pairing button on here. Let's use the remote. I'm going to click BT. I'm going to find that it's now going to pair with my phone. I'm on my Bluetooth on my phone. I'm connected. Let's get away from the FM, right? And then we go on our Bluetooth. So inside, outside, whether it's your Spotify, whether it's your FM, whether it's the movie playing on your TV, song outside, independent zone control with the JBL package. All right, guys. So we were just in that 263 FKDS with the standard 12 volt 10 cubic reefer from GE. I did want to jump over here in another unit, our 283 RKS with this rear kitchen and show you, hey, yes, that 12 volt 10 cubic is our standard, but we do here at Catalina offer a seven cubic gas electric fridge getting away from the campsite, doing a little bit more boondocking, giving you that resource and that option. So yes, it is a two-way fridge. What you're gonna see here is you're gonna see a mode control. I have it powered on now, I'm plugged in on my shore power. So you see this green light, I'm running off that electric. What we're gonna do on this mode, I'm gonna click it over here and what you're gonna see is that amber light. That amber light means you're running off the propane. If you do have a red light on there, that's showing that there's some type of air on it, an air code, check the manual, see what you gotta do to fix it. So green light, electric, amber, you're gonna be on that propane. One more cool thing that we do offer in this gas electric fridge, you see it is that black front. What we wanna do here, yes, top and bottom, you got a little side here. What you can do is you can pull this out and what we're gonna do is simply just reverse it. Reversible panel to match that wood color of your, of the inside of your kitchen. Something, hey, if you don't want the black, we can reverse it here to match the wood. brand new features for 2023 is an upgraded solar package that's an option on all Catalina models. You can always tell whether the Catalina that you're looking at has the solar package on it by the sticker on the front door. If you see that solar sticker on there, it's going to be equipped with the solar package. Now new for 2023 is also going to be standard solar prep. The solar prep is going to come with a universal solar mount installed on the roof and all the wiring pre-wired through the coach so that you can install the solar charge controller aftermarket, making it a lot easier for the installation of both the panel and the solar charge controller to make your coach solar ready. So, when we already have the solar package on, the Catalina solar package is the Go Power Solar. What that's gonna include is a 200 watt solar panel already installed on the roof. It's also going to include a 30 amp solar charge controller. 
all right? Now, one of the coolest things about GoPower is that they have a solar sizing worksheet. We're gonna make this available on the everythingcatalina.com website. It's also available online if you Google via GoPower, but it will allow you to easily pick out all your run, uh, your run hours and the total amp hours on here to figure out what level of watts and amperage you're gonna need to run your coach on solar. One of the reasons that we've gone to a 200 watt panel this year, along with our 30, 30 amp solar charge controller, is because the 200 watt panel will allow 10 amps per hour to run into the battery. That should be capable of running everything in your Catalina for the weekend under optimal sunlight conditions. Before we start disconnecting from the campsite, disconnecting your electric, disconnecting your water and everything like that, we want to give you some general maintenance tips. This is the perfect time to be able to run through a checklist or create a checklist for you and your family on maintenance tips while you're cleaning up the camper and cleaning up the campground around you before leaving. Some interior maintenance tips that I would like to give you include checking your roof vents, any of your roof vents in your bathroom, in your living room, checking to make sure windows are closed throughout the, throughout the camper there. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that any of your appliances or any of the items are not loosely sitting in the, in the camper and are put away. You're going to make sure all your cabinet doors, drawers, and bedroom doors are secured so that way when you're traveling down the road you don't have things swinging open um, or it running into slide outs, right? On the exterior, you're going to have a little added maintenance. One of the biggest things you're going to want to make sure of is that you're checking underneath your unit and in particular underneath the slide outs before you are bringing in the slide out system, right? Um, that, is, that is absolutely a must. Another exterior maintenance item that you're going to want to keep an eye on is making sure that your awning, your roof, and your slide out roofs are cleared of debris before you bring them in. Okay, this is going to help just maintain um, the roofing materials, maintain your slide outs, make sure that there's no gaps in there, maintain your awning, make sure that you're not putting any tears in there. So general maintenance idea there is just making sure that everything's clean to avoid an issue. All right. Uh, you're also, while you're at the campground and while you're going through your maintenance checklist, highly recommend that you add checking seals, right? This may not be something that you handle right away if you don't have the seal with you. However, it is something to be able to make note of since you're going around the camper anyway. You're going to want to check all your seal areas, right? So around the windows, around any of the baggage doors on the outsides, just to try to keep an eye out. And again, maybe it's make a mental note, maybe it's solve it right there, but to be able to make sure that if you have any gapping, you make a mental note of that to, to help prevent problems down the road. Last but not least, you're going to want to make sure that you check your tire pressure. Okay, so before you hit the road, make sure you check your tire pressure. Have means to be able to adjust the tire pressure if necessary. You can find the tire pressure right on the tire itself. So always double check on the tires itself for the correct tire pressure when you're checking that. While we were just talking about general maintenance items, I do want to mention that on the Coachman RV YouTube page, as well as on the everythingcatalina.com training website, we have our video on there about winterization of the trailer. All Catalinas come with a water pump and a line that is designed to make winterizing a trailer very easy. So be sure to check out the, those videos on the winterization, again, on the Coachman RV YouTube page or at everythingcatalina.com. One more important item on general outside maintenance is going to be your slide out so you're going to want to make sure that your slide out wiper seals are in good shape not too dry they're uh they're malleable and everything else not drying out or cracking and you're going to want to make sure your bulb seals are hanging in there too right this is always something you're going to want to keep and check out you're also going to want to maintain this talk to your dealer about the proper materials to be able to maintain this to make them last longer but this is very important make sure that your seals are operating properly before you bring that slide out in and you get ready to go home so as you get ready to disconnect your camper from its water source and its power source, we have some tips and tricks for you. One of the biggest tips, and, and off camera here a moment ago, I was struggling with the water line myself, is to make sure that, first of all, you clear the water lines out. You turn the water off, clear the water lines out on the inside, but go ahead and leave a faucet or two open. What that's gonna do is it's gonna relieve the pressure on the lines and it's gonna make disconnecting your water hose a lot easier, okay? So, the water hose is nice, it's, it's kinda sealed in here. And then all you need to do, and again, it's going to help by leaving that faucet open. Just hold your area and either turn this to the right or turn your hose to the left while turning that area to the right to disconnect. Now, this is also where 
having one of these little attachments, these water control or water flow attachments on here is nice because you can turn it off right at that source if you forget to turn it off at the flowing source itself. So disconnect the water area there. Again, don't forget that tip. If you're having trouble and it just seems like there's a lot of pressure in there, go ahead, open up one of the faucets, even just letting air out, even if you've let all the water through the lines already, letting that air out is gonna relieve that pressure. It's gonna make taking that hose off a lot easier for you. Now, before you disconnect your power, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is go to your power source. Some power sources come equipped with uh, breakers on them already. So if you do have one that has the breaker on there, go ahead and click the breaker off, just so again, that way you don't have an electrical current flowing through this as you're disconnecting. One of the last things uh, that you're going to do when you're picking up your campground and getting ready to go is actually going to be raising the stabilizer jacks and removing any chalks that you have. The reason why I like to save this till the very end is because that way you can position your truck. You already have a level camper and stabilized camper. So there's no reason to necessarily have to do it this way, but Again, another tip, I like to say, leave the stabilization intact. Just don't forget to lift them after hooking the truck up. So first things first, what you're gonna do, grab your three quarter inch drill bit. Makes it real easy, a lot easier than manually cranking. And you're just gonna bring them up until they're set. Now you still can grab your manual crank and give it one extra turn if you feel like just making sure that it's secure is good to go. You're gonna wanna grab your chocks as well. And then you're also gonna wanna make sure you check, take your X-lock or any of your block, locks off the wheels before you get ready to go and stow these away as well. A standard feature that's available on all Catalinas is the black tank flush. Uh, this small little feature that you see on the exterior here is actually a huge feature benefit for the owner of Catalina. And here's why, because it makes one of the dirtiest jobs after you're done camping, cleaning out your black tank, a whole lot easier. Right. Instead of having to take buckets or a wand and go inside with a hose and dump water down down in, through the toilet or take that wand down there to clean everything out, it's all solved from the outside of the trailer and it largely becomes a one-man job. All right, so your black tank flush, similar to your water connection here, you're going to want to make sure that the hose, you've got your water flow regulator on the outside there so that way you can have the water on but be able to control it. You're just going to hook it up to the black tank flush location there make sure it has a nice tight seal on there and then this is why you want to have the pressure regulator on here as opposed to having to run back and turn the water on you can already have the water on we're not going to turn that on quite yet because what you don't want to do is flood your tanks especially the black tank so we're going to go uh, over to the evac site now we're going to show you how to hook all of that stuff up so now we're over at the evac location here you can see that you've got your gray tank labeled with the gray the black tank labeled with the black before you take your cap off, highly recommend that you make sure that these are closed. Um, so you're gonna wanna make sure that these are closed and locked. This is an attachment that you can buy after market. It's nice to have the nice clear attachment. I'll be able to show you why once we start emptying. But the clear attachment is going to help you know when all of your tanks are clean. So we attach this to our hose here. It just twists on. Then you attach to the evac location. And we set our hose up. Now that everything's hooked up and secured and you know where all the waste is going to be flowing into the proper uh, waste areas here, what you're gonna wanna do is start by opening the black tank valve, okay? And there's a reason why we open the black tank first and we'll get to that, but save the gray tank, okay? So you're gonna start by opening the black tank valve. You can see that it's being emptied out here. One thing of note and a tip here, try to always make sure that your tanks are at least two thirds full because this is a gravity fed system. So making sure that they're two thirds full, whether you have to fill them with the fresh water or anything like that, is going to help ensure that you get kind of a vacuum force rush like we just saw here to empty everything out. It's gonna make sure that all that waste and everything clears out quickly so it's not just a trickle, all right? Now, once you've got this emptied out, you're not gonna close it off yet because we're gonna go use that black tank flush we talked about. Once you've opened and you started the evac process, right? If everything's good, you can come over here. Now you're gonna start your black tank flush water running through. You're gonna wanna make sure that your black tank valve is opened up. 
Now, this is where having this clear portion on here is nice. You can see that we're actually getting a nice steady flow. What that black tank flush valve is doing from the outside, you have water flowing into the black tank. Built into the black tank is a sprayer faucet. What's nice about that is it's not just flowing into the tank, it's actually spraying out the inside. So it's gonna make sure that it's hitting the walls, uh, the, the bottom portion of it, any of your sensors as well. You can see you've got the nice, smooth uh, flow right now. Having this clear attachment on here is nice. Once we know that the black tank starts running a little clearer and all the waste has been removed, we can tell, right? So then we'll go turn off our black tank flush water first and then we'll seal up the black tank. Now, this is the key. One of the reasons why we save the gray tank till the end is because the gray tank is all your soapy water from washing your hands, washing your dishes, washing, uh, taking a shower, right? So we save this till the end. Once we get all of this closed up, then we're gonna evac our gray tank, which in turn is gonna help clean all of our hoses out as well. We've completely emptied our black tank. Everything's been running smoothly through here. So we're good. We've turned off our black tank flush. We can close our black tank valve back up, make sure it's closed all the way, right? And now, again, saving that gray tank with all that soapy water to help clean everything out. You can open your gray tank. And you'll see how that flushes through. This is the benefit to having one of these clear pieces on here. You can really understand what you're emptying out. So, one added tip that I forgot to mention, when you're hooking all of this up, if there's any question whatsoever that maybe something may not be hooked up right, you may want to release a little gray first before moving over to your black, just to avoid any dirty messes. guys that actually concludes our video today uh, setting up and tearing down a coachman catalina appreciate you sticking with us for about the past hour hope you had some fun hope you learned something do remember that you can use this video as a resource for out at the campsite or anywhere else you may need a quick reminder and keep an eye out for some of our spotlight videos that go a little more in depth on certain functions and aspects you'll find those on our website or on our youtube page uh, another thing to kind of, if you have, do have any feedback or you, you, you know, want to learn something on the trailer, feel free to reach out to us at CoachmanCatalina.com on our Facebook page or our YouTube. Other than that, I want to thank you again for your business. Here at Coachman, we strive to provide a positive and customer-oriented experience. Uh, welcome to the Coachman Catalina family and can't wait to see the memories that you and your family make in our product. Thanks again. Have a great day.